And a good Wednesday morning to you on the first day of hurricane season, June 1st. I'm meteorologist Pate Malone giving you your first tropical update of the hurricane season here. And as we go more into the season, of course, things ramp up. As you can see on the graphic there, traditionally, we don't see a whole lot of activity in the month of May and June. And even July stays pretty quiet. And so far, we have not had a named system yet in the Atlantic Basin. We had Agatha, but that was in the Pacific Basin. So now we're uh, looking at the Atlantic Basin here and really late August, September and October are our main months for hurricane season and our main months for more significant storms. Now, with all that being said, we are watching a few disturbances down in the Atlantic Basin. We've got a disturbance to the north and east of the Bahamas. You can see it there and uh, in yellow, meaning just a low potential. It tries to develop probably not going to do much and it's lifting towards the north and east. Uh, and really the east towards Bermuda, just some showers and storms there. Now notice a uh, lot brighter colors down here in the Northwest Caribbean. That's going to be closer to Cozumel and Cancun. And this is our disturbance we've been watching for the past couple of days. The National Hurricane Center continues to increase the chances that this tries to organize into our first depression and maybe our first tropical storm or subtropical storm of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Now what we're going to be watching with this is how it comes together. Part of this is what's left over of Agatha a couple of days ago. Part of it is just a big pocket of moisture and a broad low pressure system. And you could see where the green is. That's the broad low pressure within it. There are showers and storms. So we've got a big old area of storms right here off the coast of the Yucatan uh, Peninsula and Cozumel. And then over here is where the remnants of Agatha actually are. Not much to that right now, but notice big bursts of storms overnight and this morning off the coast here in the Northwest Caribbean. So the Hurricane Center is currently highlighting more in here for our development chances as it slowly lifts to the north and east. Now the environment right now, it is somewhat conducive for it to try to organize some, but there are um, there is wind shear and dry air that's going to be impacting this over the next several days. So uh, if it's going to do something, it's going to be fighting the wind shear and the dry air. You notice it's going to be lifting towards South Florida, not going to be an issue for the North Gulf Coast, but moving towards South Florida as we go into the late week and into the weekend. So they could start to see some impacts from this in Florida by, let's say, around Friday. As I mentioned, there's wind shear and dry air, and those two things are just going to work against whatever is trying to form here. And that trough of low pressure that is in the Gulf of Mexico, you could see it dipping into the Gulf right now. Uh, that's what's going to cause the wind shear and dryer. That's what's also pulling this system to the north and east. So as this swings down this trough, it's pulling the moisture. It's pulling whatever's trying to develop towards South Florida and keeping it away from the North Gulf Coast. At the same time, look what else is happening in the Gulf of Mexico. You see all this brown? That's dry air. And dry air is going to keep a system from really intensifying quickly. And also, whenever this trough is in the Gulf, it's imparting wind shear. So it's helping dry air get into whatever core is trying to develop in that low pressure. Notice though, as we go into Friday, Saturday, a lot of that moisture is over South Florida. It's over the Bahamas and that's where the rain would be. Now this dry air is going to keep this a lopsided system, meaning the rain is just probably going to be on one side, the east side and the south side. The north and west side are we're not going to see much in regard to rain. It'll be a little breezy, but that's about it. So any impacts with this system would be in South Florida Friday, Saturday, and maybe into Sunday, and it would be a heavy rainfall potential. Yes, there may be some breezy winds if it strengthens into a weak tropical storm, but with the sheer, the dry air, we're just not anticipating this to cause huge, huge problems with regard to what you would traditionally see with a hurricane. So yes, we've got the warm Gulf waters. The Gulf waters are currently very warm, actually. We're currently sitting in the 80s for a lot of the Gulf. This is moving over the loop current. You heard a lot of hype about that a couple of weeks ago, but you got to have other things. You've got to have low wind shear. You've got to have no dry air. And guess what? We've got dry air and wind shear. So that's why we're anticipating this to be a weak system, which is typically what we see in the month of, of June in the Gulf of Mexico. If this does strengthen enough, it would get our first name on the Atlantic Basin list. That is Alex. We will see if it gets strong enough. It's definitely going to be fighting that wind shear and dry air. One thing that seems more certain, of course, is it becoming a depression, tropical depression one. So we will wait and see what exactly happens there. But for the first day of hurricane season, tracking a couple of things out there, South Florida is going to be keeping an eye on this one. This one is not going to impact the northern Gulf Coast other than maybe some rip currents for the Florida Panhandle. That is your tropical update, though, on June 1st, the morning of June 1st on this Wednesday, the first day of hurricane season. I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone.